Seeing a SWAT vehicle stationed outside P&G's headquarters had at least one nearby business owner worried about the worst. Well, it always crosses your mind, yeah, especially the way things are nowadays. Fortunately, the police presence was proactive, meant to keep P&G workers safe while they left their offices and headed home because company officials decided to close for the day. P&G shuttered its downtown worksite because, according to the Kenton County Sheriff's Office, a former employee made threatening comments about the maker of products including Tide detergent and Pampers. That former employee is now undergoing a mental health evaluation. Today's dizzying developments hit close to home for Stephen Smith, who has a family connection to Procter & Gamble. It does to a certain extent, Todd. Um, if you've ever been in P&G, you can't just walk in and go up to the 13th floor, <laughs> right? It's, it's pretty well guarded, and, and the fact that, you know, they took the necessary steps that they did, you know, suggests that, um, the, again, the good news here is they were taking this seriously. For more than a decade, Smith has operated a wired family. Much of his focus centers on teaching students how to safely navigate social media sites and how to alert others to danger. That appears to have played a role in today's turn of events involving the former P&G worker. It appears that some people noticed he was he was crying for help that you know he had these mental health issues and they saw something and they said something and god knows how many lives they might have been able to save and as we reported earlier today that former worker has had several mental health related interactions with law enforcement during the last year just last fall covington police say they had to break the man's car windows while they were serving a mental health warrant on him at that time Reporting live downtown, Todd Dykes, WLWT News 5. Todd, we need to emphasize here the man has not been charged with any crime, and that's why we're not naming him. But with that, that in mind, what else have you learned about why he's in custody right now? Well, Cherie, police found the man at his home in Kenton County. He was taken to a hospital for an evaluation. He can be held there for 72 hours until a decision is made regarding his mental health. So we'll keep an eye on that, Cherie. All right, and if anything changes, of course, we'll update people. Todd Dykes, live for us tonight. Thanks for the update.